Hi, this is Dan at FontSpring showcasing our new tool called the Font Maturator. This tool takes an image, detects glyphs inside of the image, and actually matches them to fonts in our library. I'm going to jump over here to the Cuesta project and um, go ahead and just take a screenshot of this font and I'm going to demonstrate how it works. If I upload this, it detects the glyphs and also detects what it thinks those glyphs might be. Now it's real important in this case uh, this is wrong so we want to leave this blank because those will mess up the results. Likewise with this, this, uh, this group of letters. We only want to include the letters that are, that are well formed and that would match well. So that's the maturator at its finest, as simple as that. Now it gets a little complicated uh, as you get into images with a lot of different detail and things like that. So I wanted to uh, very quickly uh, show you some tips that you can use to get the, the best results um, to actually find the fonts that you're looking for. Let me show you uh, this one. This is uh, Bombshell. The reason why this is going to have problems is because it's all connected. All the letters uh, flow right into the next letter. So what you want to do with connected fonts is uh, separate them like I did here. And um, then we should be able to get the results we want. Now because it's a script font, uh, we weren't able to detect what the actual letters were. So um, we'll just have to fill those in by hand. Shouldn't have a problem. There you go, bombshell. Another tool that we can use is actually to uh, to narrow it down by the classification. So um, bombshell is a modern calligraphy font. If I click that, that's going to give us even better results. Um, <clears throat> this is very useful. If uh, let's say you already knew it was bombshell, uh, but you wanted a font that you could embed in your website. Bombshell doesn't have a web license, so um, Bombshell doesn't have a web license, so in this case you can choose a different font that's very similar so you can actually uh, web embed it. Let me show you another example. This is uh, Lulo. Lulo has a lot of layers and um, in, in this case it actually I believe has five layers. It has the outline, and the fill. This is the the white part is the fill and then it has this yellow font and then it may only have four. This brown font may be the yellow font but what happens here is you the the fonts are designed to stack on top of each other. Um, we're gonna have a problem matching this font because we don't know that that we have to stack all the fonts to match it. So what you want to do here is uh, try to pick out just just the the best formed letters and in this case it'll probably actually work and I'm not gonna fill them all in but my guess is I can actually get uh, so it did find Lulo and um, another thing you can do though is like like I did here is to actually uh, trace them out a little bit um, and that can help so if I were to do that uh, we're going to exclude this O because that didn't work. It was able to detect those letters. And so what we can do here is actually use the tags again because it has a hard time finding um, outlines and uh, fonts with very small rounded edges, it, let's say like Proxima Nova Soft. Um, because of the way it works, it's going to kind of ignore those rounded edges. It's just looking at the overall shape. So in this case, if we uh, drill it down a little bit and specifically tell it that's an outline font, it's, then it's going to find your outline font that you were looking for. So another thing that you really want to watch is uh, images that have a lot of different fonts in them. <clears throat> I'll upload this image and show you. Uh, there's a lot going on here and it really doesn't know uh, what you're looking for. So one thing you can do is just uh, crop the image down to just the font that you're trying to match. That will really help. I think I cropped that a little close. Let's see. Probably the S isn't going to work. But we can uh, remove this E because the E is malformed. So that's going to mess up our results a little bit. 
and uh, this should come up with Bodoni. If I were to use the image uncropped, you know, with all those letters, if I just took its word for it and went, you know, went with what our with with what we found, uh, see, it would be very messed up. So. Um, we could probably still find the font with this image without cropping it if I just clear all the boxes. Uh, I'll skip the, uh, the U there, and the E will probably work. So that worked. So <clears throat> crop them down or just clear out all the extra garbage if it, if it actually found a few of the letters. So if I were to use something like this font um, or this image, you can see that it uh you can see it has so much going on that it's probably going to uh not find anything. Let's see what it found. So it did find a few of the letters. Let's see if we can actually match it. So uh, we'll skip that one because we already got a good E. Alright, so let's give that a try. So that had a little bit of trouble. So let me demonstrate this. If we crop it down to just the letters, because what's happening is all these other colors are uh, confusing it. It's not sure what are shapes and uh, what's the background. So if we remove all those other colors, so it's only got a couple to pick from, it's going to be able to pinpoint the shapes much better, like you can see here. So that was a little closer, and then Again, we can use the tags uh, because it, it probably didn't detect that it was a grunge font. If we put grunge in, then <clears throat> that's a perfect example of how you can uh, drill down with your tags. Now it found veneer, and that's what we wanted it to find. So make sure you prep your image, crop it, try to change the contrast if you need to, um, to really get the, the glyphs to pop more than the background. Um, upload your image, remove any malformed letters uh, that are that are going to skew the results. It doesn't like open type letters because it's not going to look for open type letters. So if you have um, if you have any uh, uh, unique characters, we have some examples here in the help section. Um, anything like uh, this this connected S to the to the P that's going to um, that's going to really mess everything up. Uh, so don't include those letters. Um, small caps, it's going to detect that they're uppercase, so you're going to have to go back through and, and add the lowercase glyphs here. If this were a small caps, you'd want to put the lowercase r so that it matches to our, um, to our library and matches the lowercases that are small caps. Um, and then lastly, experiment with your, with your uh, inputs a little bit. If, uh, if I remove this uh, grunge classification, you know, uh, if there's a certain letter that is more unique than others, you can try uh, tailoring your, your inputs and try to see if it'll come closer. So that's the gist of the maturator. I hope you find it really useful. You can look forward to a lot of great improvements as time goes on. Um, you take this tool and combine it with the, with the largest hand-tagged library, and FontSpring really is just the best place to find fonts on the web.